regarding um, Barstool Sports. This is pretty interesting news just broke now on Twitter. It looks like Dave Dave Portnoy has got Barstool Sports back under his control. He got it back completely from Penn Entertainment, as you say here. Penn Entertainment sells Barstool Sports back to founder Dave Portnoy. This is a big deal because obviously recently that Mitzi guy got fired um, for dropping the end bomb while live on stream doing his show. So obviously he quickly rehired him. But I'm also surprised because I got the feeling for a while that Dave Portnoy was kind of like over doing business and shit. He kind of was talking a lot about, you know, recently he went on a massive like world tour. I feel like he's in Italy. He was doing loads of interviews with people where he was talking about how he's kind of happy. He doesn't have to do the whole day to day being in the office and stuff. So I'm surprised he now has decided to take back full control, to be honest. It kind of feels like it came out of the blue, but maybe him going on the world tour and kind of enjoying himself these last few months has been an indication that he was always going to get back into the fray because maybe now he's thinking, hey, I'm going to double down and actually get back to work. So I need to have a break now because I'm not going to have a break in a long time. Who knows? Anyway, let's read the article. It says, Dave Portnoy, the outspoken founder of Barstool Sports, is once again the owner of his media brand after buying it back from Penn Entertainment. The value of the deal, which was announced on Tuesday, was not immediately known. Barstool Sports was valued at $606 million in February when Penn bought the rest of the company it didn't already own. Penn became minority owner in 2020. So they bought the whole company in full in Feb and then gave it back to him already in fucking September. So in August. What fucking happened? This seems strange, isn't it? Um, Portnoy, who founded Barstool Sports in 2003, said in a post on Tuesday that Penn and Barstool had gone their separate ways and Penn said the that the the de investor was a completed in exchange for a non-compete and other restrictive covenants so basically he didn't have to pay any money basically it looks like just a clause of a non-compete and other restrictive covenants call penn sold Barcel sports at a time that he announced an online sports deal with disney um owned by espn oh this might be the reason then that that disclosure sent penn shares up more than 50 percent. so maybe penn were signing this yeah that makes more sense Penn sold Barcel Sports same time they announced the deal. Yeah, that makes more sense. That's probably why they sold it. This deal they're doing with Disney. That disclosure center, the Penn will have the right to 50% of the gross proceeds of the uh, in the event Portnoy sells or monetizes Barcel, the release said. And I guess that's probably why he said in the, in the press release or in the emergency press thing he did that he's never going to sell Barcel Sports now. Now that he owns it and is in his control, he's never, ever going to sell it. And if it does need to, you know, if he does pass away, when he passes away, he's going to give it to one of the other guys that founded Barstool Sports with him or one of the early guys, but he's never going to sell it. So interesting to see how it goes on. I'm interested to see what happens going forward. Um, is he going to double down with the podcasting content? Are they going to double down more on just do sports? Are they going to branch out to other fields? Like, I'm eager to see what happens going forward now with Barstool Sports. Um, but yeah, cool to see Dave Portnoy back in control of the company 100%. Um, so let's see what they do from now on going forward. Uh, moving on from that, let's get into all the Brendan shit because I can't stay too, too long. Let's get into Brendan shit. Um... What are you guys saying in the chat here? Um, Uche is saying, if Kelsey had immunity, couldn't she have said she did it and not gone in trouble? And what was Corey's, and that was Corey off the hook? Yeah, I think some people were saying that, Uche. I think that's why some people who are Tory fans, because I follow, I follow everybody on social, especially on Twitter. I love to do that to kind of get both sides of the story. But I think a lot of the Tory fan base are saying the same thing. Like, she could have got, because I think, if I'm not mistaken, Kelsey was pregnant at the time. No was pregnant at the time the whole trial was going on so you can understand her being a new mum she didn't want to go to prison right i understand that so she did what she had to do to protect her family i think everyone would kind of do that cool but i think some people are arguing that she could have done that but also still exonerated tory at some respect or helped him out and she didn't i think she gave the, she gave tory's camp the impression that she was going to do it I don't think anybody knew she had immunity. And then when she got in the stand, she kind of pulled a bit of a, a, a bit of a Uno. Do you know what I mean? A bit of a reverse Uno, sorry. And then everyone was kind of shocked when it happened. So, um, you know, in that respect, she was kind of smart, but I guess it kind of is what it is, isn't it? I still put responsibility on Tory, man. If you just would have chilled out, had a glass of water, I know, you know, I can, un I can understand as a dude how fucking incredible that experience must have been. Knowing in the back of your head that you're smashing both of these women, right? what megan one of the most desirable women in hip-hop kelsey she was a close second because she was always hanging around megan at the time they were kind of known you know around fucking social media wearing the same fucking you know style bikini and shit and looking fabulous on ig 
then turning up to Kylie's and she's giving you the fucking fuck me eyes. I can understand how most guys would kind of shake at the knees at that. But I just think you have to kind of, you know, judge your risks accordingly. There was just too many landmines. He was he was never going to be in a position where he was going to fuck Kylie anyway, especially that night, because, you know, there was just too many people to kind of navigate against, right? Like Kelsey and, you know, and fucking Megan are there. They both like you. It was just hard to fucking figure it out. So he should have abandoned the fucking mission and just sat back and relaxed, had a drink, had some good times, whatever, smoked, did some Xanax, whatever they fucking do in those rich houses. He didn't need to try so hard. And I think him trying to make it happen, setting off fucking Megan, them having an argument, then the blow up in the car, it just was all avoidable in my opinion. But, you know, maybe I'm being a little bit too fucking simpy about it. I don't know. Let's move on from that one. Let's talk about this. Um, So, going on to the fucking Brendan shit. Brendan was recently on Joe Rogan Experience um, for the Fight Companion. Um, for the UFC fight night that happened over the this past weekend, and obviously watching some of the boxing between Jake Paul and fucking Nate Diaz, and it was an interesting fight companion to watch because the first thing that kind of struck you watching it was Brendan was definitely looking for Joe's approval more than usual, which for me is more evidence that they don't talk as often because I feel like. If you go to some of his earlier episodes where he was really like, you know, friendly with Joe and Joe was still in LA, you could tell they spoke often because sometimes they wouldn't have anything to talk about or just Brennan was just really relaxed. Whenever he goes on Rogan these days, he's it feels like he's kind of performing, like he's trying to remind Rogan, hey, we're friends, right? Hey, remember I can make you laugh. Hey, remember this thing I know about you. Hey, remember this thing we did before? Like he's kind of doing that thing where he's sort of trying to remind joe that they're friends that they're cool that he's funny that he likes him it was just a strange in interaction to see and i guess because i'm a little bit detached from both of these guys I just watched them for the content i'm not really you know as much as i love rogan i'm not kind of in love with the guy i could just view it as like two adults two middle-aged you know or two guys that got kids and shit and the power dynamic is strange like i've always said this like as much as people kind of rag on rogan like it must be so odd to be like just a dude that does a podcast but then have all these guys around you who legitimately like worship you like they look at you like you're a fucking god it must be such an odd dynamic to kind of navigate through day to day because even your friends like brendan is somebody that i would think is you know rogan's friend and even he does the whole like joe rogan like me like me please rogan like me please rogan dance so it must be odd for rogan to kind of just you know navigate that because even your friends are acting weird it's just a bizarre thing anyway 